Welcome to another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. I'm your host, Jessica May, with your co-host, Marilyn Parham. And today we're going to dive into financial KPIs and data cadences for your online business. I mean, Marilyn, that's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. What does it mean? <laughs> and yeah, what does data cadences mean? Like we almost, we might be getting a little too fancy around here with words like that we'll make it simple we really will i know it sounds kind of big but honestly we wanted to have this conversation because we get a lot of questions about kpis and data right and it's a moving target so you ready to dive in Marilyn? i am let's go here we go financial kpis and data cadences So let's just break down KPI because you might not, dear listener, know what a KPI is. And honestly, it's just a fancy acronym that I think having been in business now for decades at this point that we just like to talk about KPIs and it's just the bottom line. It's a key performance indicator. That's right. And people call it all kinds of stuff like what should we be hitting? Right, exactly. Or what's a KPI? Or what's our metric? Or what data should we be looking at? Like people say it all kinds of ways. And if me and Marilyn are getting back to our front porch down here in the South drinking sweet tea, we pretty much say, well, what's our target? Or where would she, where should we be? What should we be hitting? Literally. (laughs) And kind of the more formal term is KPI. And we wanted to talk about this topic again. This isn't our first radio talking about data or KPIs on the podcast, is it? No, and a lot of people make it pretty complex, and it can get that way, but it really can. Doesn't need to be. And honestly, your business might get to the point where the challenge is to deal with the complexity of the growth and all the things you need to measure while figuring out how to keep it simple, practical, and powerful. And Reducing complexity is like the greatest challenge on the planet that is like the hardest work you'll ever do. Right. To boil something down to its most meaningful point, which I think is the true art of deciding what financial KPI should you have, right? Absolutely. Because there's marketing KPIs and sales KPIs and HR KPIs and there's a KPI for everything out there. You got it. You got an eye. I got a KPI. Like you could make a KPI like 10 hundred miles long. That's not even like a true number. I that's, guess. That's, but. that's why I shy away from that word, that terminology yeah. anyway, because I mean, it can be anything. <laughs> and some of the KPIs out there, you know, don't have a lot of meaning to most people. Right. They might for really big companies, but and, and that, here's what makes here's it mine. stressful is you're not really sure what you should be tracking. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, once you decide kind of ideally based on a blog post you read <laughs> or the fact that you slept at a holiday in last night and you suddenly are like, I should measure this kind of stuff. <laughs> then it becomes like, how are we going to pull the data? And that mm-hmm. in and of itself becomes a big hairy deal because if you don't have the things in place to pull it, then that becomes in itself part of the process and problem that you're trying to solve and then I think what we've learned is like let's track things that actually mean something to us and that we can actually do something about right now yeah I mean that's that's really what it boils down to yeah that's what I meant by my comment is that so many so many people track things it just doesn't matter it's not important to their business yeah as much And I think financially, there's probably five key things that you should know at any given point in your business with a high degree of certainty. And so, I mean, I think a good goal for this podcast is like breaking down the essential five, you know, finance KPIs made easy in five, if you will, Mm -hmm. like what things are just the basics, because this could deal with the startup person and it could deal with the person that's like, Veteran business going and growing, right? And then let's talk about that big, I don't know, it's a, frankly a junky title, uh, data cadences, who even talks like that? We do. 
<laughs> but some people might be like report cadence or scheduling. Like how often should we look at data and what data should we be looking at at which frequency? That's basically what a data cadence is, right? Right. So the cadence interval, dear listener, is just simply weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual. You know, there are some things that we need to be looking at every week. There are some things we need to be looking at once a month. And usually that monthly is just an aggregate for the quarterly and the annual. Right. There might be some special things you should look at quarterly and annual that you look at at no other time other than those two seasons. Uh, The most common are obviously going to be the weekly and the monthly. And as a result of VOS, we do have a weekly data scorecard. We have numbers that we look at on a weekly basis that we're supposed to obsess over. And because we obsess over it, it means we can actually materially have an impact on it. Right. So that it stays on track most of the time Mm -hmm. or helps identify problems we need to solve before they become a real issue that's going to eventually be a threat to the growth of our business. So that's all that is, is a cadence (laughs) of like, how often are we going to look at this number and what are we going to do about it? You know, is it on track or off track? What's it telling us? It sounds cooler than frequency. So I like cadence. (laughs) Yeah, I like cadence too. (laughs) What's cadence, shall we? I do like this dance. It's just a dance. It's a data dance. That's what I think of it. It's a data dance. And I will also tell you that you think you need one piece of data, but you slowly begin to find out like, "Uh, I can't do nothing about that right now. It's not making the impact that my business really needs right now. So you may come in and out of data dances, Mm -hmm. depending on the season you're at in your business. Yeah, we have. Oh, gosh, yes. You may. You really may come out of data dances with your business. And you may find that what you once looked at weekly, you can now just start reviewing monthly. Yes. You know, not every weekly thing that you decide to pay attention to needs to be evaluated weekly. Once you've got some trust in it and that it's kind of stable, you don't need to look at it as often. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be a little backwards. You might, this is not going to be the standard answer because mm-hmm. we're actually talking to the listener that's either in startup or dream up mode, if you will to building mode, to scale mode, like we have all types of listeners on our podcast. But what we know, depending on where, there are a lot of businesses that are in scale up mode that don't have infrastructure in place around these kinds of things. Right. So we have learned that when it comes to this area of businesses, a lot of times growing businesses get there and then they're like, hey, we're here. (laughs) We've got new challenges. Now what? (laughs) You know, how are we going to actually let go as owners and visionaries and actually have a team? (laughs) And so just because someone's in scale up mode, I can promise you this. This doesn't mean they have this financial area kind of dialed in. In fact, it's many times unless the owner has actually had some impact on this or they actually had someone who could kind of take care of this. This is a very loosey goosey area for a lot of businesses, even businesses that do really well and make lots of money. Mm -hmm. Because cash can cure a lot of things for a little while, so you don't have to pay attention to it. And that's always part of kind of the symptom of why they don't have structure in place to get to that next level, because they just had the cash to do what they needed while they were in the climb. Would you think that's a fair statement, Marilyn? It's very fair. And, you know, you can, you can have debt that'll give you, get you way far. And then all of a sudden it just comes crashing down. Yes. Yeah. You're just like, we're on this cause wheel or this mission wheel. So if you don't have these things in place, please don't have blame, shame, or guilt around it. Don't feel behind about it. If you do have these things in place and you're not consistent with it, please do not have blame, shame, or guilt about it. (laughs) If you do have these things in place, but you're not hitting all the things you think you should be hitting, don't have blame, shame, or guilt about it. Are we noticing a theme here, Jane? <laughs> There's a theme. <laughs> and if it's really working, but you're finding yourself not breaking through, don't have blame, shame, or, or, or guilt about it. It's just an indication that you might need to start measuring something different more frequently to help you get through to the next thing. And so 
That's why I just think there's no hard and fast rule here. Mm -hmm. There's a foundation and then there's a building and that's it. It's everything else is in the land of in between and, and you get to decide what is meaningful. And if you don't keep challenging yourself at every turn, is this something we really need to invest our time, energy, and money in right now tracking, then that's going to let you know what to do. I want to start with the financial KPI of cash. Now, most people would say sales because that is cash and that is cash flow. So I'm being a bit unconventional by saying cash, but having been doing this with this community that we do it for online business owners and e-commerce business owners and knowing where people start, like a lot of times you run out of money way before you run out of ideas or, (laughs) or runway, if you will, like your cash is your runway. And even if you're growing, like a lot of times people know they need to add people to the process and that takes money or they want to invest in training or tools. And I'm kind of taking it all the way back into the early days. Like the bottom line, guys, it's been around since 96. Marilyn and I have been each other's lives since 2003. And we've been serving this online community together since 2013. So we've seen some stuff. And A lot of times we talk about this is going to be very counter to a lot of the things that we've said in the past of like, get your books in order and things like that. But part of the profit first mentality and things like that is cash management. And people really don't know how much, how far their cash is going to go. And they start dealing with cash flow when they feel like they're in a crisis with cash. Right. And I'm kind of like, what if you kind of like paid attention to the cash a bit more intently as a KPI from the very beginning? Well, cash is king, especially with small business. So as you said, if if you run out of cash, you're kind of in in trouble. So to pay attention to that from the beginning makes sense. Yeah. And like I said, I'm kind of putting data, the data dance on its head right now because we actually don't start talking about cash flow forecasting and things like that with our clients until they've got their books in order and their taxes filed. But we know the reason why they're struggling, which is why Profit First is so effective, is that there's a lot of things not happening with their resource allocation of cash. And we don't necessarily know how far that cash is going to carry us. And when you're starting out in business, the next thing is revenue, right? We got to tra- track revenue. That pulls it into the the second KPI. So the first KPI is cash. And basically that is just how much money do we have in the bank? How much do we have? And then, you know, how long is it going to last us? I mean, that's part of it. Well, if you're just looking weekly, how much money do we have in the bank? Or you're Mm -hmm. looking monthly, like how much money do we have in the bank? And there are things like the cash flow forecasting of how long can we run on this if, if nothing changes. Right. But just, I think people just paying attention to the balance of cash and then maybe they decide they're doing debt, right? And so maybe there's a way to kind of say, okay, cash is defined as this, this, and this, right? Mm -hmm. This is all that we have. And so what if we were looking at the balance of what we had available, however that got defined every week? We weren't necessarily doing a cash forecast and getting fancy yet, although if you spent time doing that, it would be time well spent, right? But what if we put the balance of cash or the balance that we were willing to invest in front of us once a week? Do you think that would have an impact on people? Well, yeah. I mean, what you you see is what you pay attention to. Yeah. So if you got the cash in front of you every week and you see trends or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, that's going to be important to you. Mm -hmm. This is happening live on the podcast right now, folks. Marilyn didn't even know I was going to throw that out there because we had the five numbers, but cash is usually like after the fact, like revenue is usually the first thing. And there's just a piece of me that says, hey, what if we just put cash first, you know, and well, and have I, the people define cash? Yeah. I mean, even our own business, you, you have to pay your bills. You have to yes. know what your cash is. So you've got to do it in tandem with, with pretty much. And hey, here's else. us being transparent and vulnerable. We do look at cash weekly. We mm-hmm. do have a 13 week rolling cash flow forecast. Uh, we did not start out that way at all. No, no. And it was, and a it went for years. Yeah. 
that we looked at the balance sheet, but we were going for the gusto, you know, mm-hmm. like we were going to make this work and build it and it will come kind build of build it right? and it will come. <laughs> so it's kind of us too speaking from the scar and not the wound. Like, you know, we've had, we, we're in business just like you are dear listener. And mm-hmm. we learn as we go too. Now, I do think the second one, if there's financial KPIs made easy in five, after you know what your cash balance is weekly, and is it building or is it declining, (laughs) sales, revenue. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times there's ways to report sales. I've had conversations with clients where there's sales that they've earned but and sales they've collected. Okay, so again, when you decide the KPI, you've got to define the KPI so that you actually know what you're reporting, how to pull that report, and is that the way you should be viewing sales? So what's most common is revenue that's collected, especially in the early days um, of a business. And so focusing on top line revenue as like the total revenue is I think very important because that's going to be an indicator of cash flow in the beginning. Right. And I think looking at that weekly is very important because you should know what you need to earn per day or per week in order to kind of stay on track with the needs of the business. And in our business, we actually track actual sales, which is earned revenue, but we have track cash flow, which also reflects the income that we're expecting. So it gets more advanced and complicated over time because part of the reason why we track actual sales, meaning the whole annual contract of a package we've served, is because your marketing and sales team needs to be, your client acquisition needs to be driving top line growth financially. And so this is, we have to track the whole sale, not just the collected sale. And in the online space, um, I you know, we went through those years where people wanted to just I had a million dollar launch, but they actually only collected $500,000 in the bank. Right. And so there's a difference in what you're tracking. So I think this is a season conversation and you have to define the KPI. So what is cash and cash defined in total? And what is revenue and revenue defined so that you're consistently for that season of time reporting the right number? And the most common would be revenue collected meaning cash in the bank cash in and the that's bank. the easiest way to kind of get started right because when you start tracking all those <laughs> other things with launches like that's a whole nother ball game and maybe that's not relative to like the the measurable that you need to see for the actual health of the business just yet so anything else that you would add to revenue Marilyn um, well, again, if if you're if you're not looking at your revenue, you're not paying attention to how it's uh, coming and going. <laughs> so that's going to be really important. Yeah. Another thing that you should kind of consider tracking, it might not be weekly, but this could not be a way to kind of build a little mini cash flow out. I don't know. Like I'm just kind of getting ideas all over the place and doing this on the fly on the podcast is a bad time to be doing this, but hello, I'm a visionary and that's how we tend to rock everyone's world. But the other thing, at least once a month, you should be reviewing your costs, what it's actually costing you to create sales. And this would be your cost of goods, right? Right. And understanding what your cost of goods are as a percentage of your sales. Because for an e-commerce business, this could be huge. It, it is huge. And in, in the accounting world, you know, that's gross profit percentage. It factors mm-hmm. in your cost. Mm-hmm. So, And a lot yeah. of times people don't remember they have credit card processing fees. And if you mm-hmm. have a lot of high ticket sales and services, I mean, 3% of your sales is a lot. And you should know if you're actually, you know, doing anywhere near that, if they don't understand their refund rates. They don't understand, you know, their inventory well. It's just kind of a cash thing in the early days. But you should understand as a percentage of sales what your cost of goods are. And the best way to know that is how much did we actually invest in cost of goods and comparative mm-hmm. to the sales we actually sold and collected on in that same month, right? This is all kind of a cash conversation. Right. So we're not talking super fancy about the cruel people. There's a lot to kind of focus on when you get into that. We're just dealing with straight lines here today. 
I think the next thing from that is like actually putting down on paper once a month what your gross profit is, which in the profit first world would be your real revenue. And while gross profit and AKA real revenue, the reason why that's so important is that's the plate we all have to eat from, right, Marilyn? That's right. It's it's gone. <laughs> The, the rest of it's gone. So that yes. is the plate you have to eat from. This is the plate you have to eat from. So like Marilyn, what, because of profit first, what do we know gets funded out of gross profit or real revenue? Profit, um, yep. taxes. The owners your, pay owners and the pay. operating expenses. Your operating expenses, right? Because the costs are already gone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's very sobering if you see on your scorecard Revenue was a thousand dollars and cost of goods was eight hundred and gross profit was two hundred. If you you know, and then you have ca- total cash available up at the top, like that starts to paint a, a picture of like are the numbers going in the direction they're supposed to be going at a very high level, right? And guess what? You can pull like revenue. Typically, you can pull that without having an accounting process in place. We don't recommend that. <laughs> You can't you can do it. Pull though, cat. There is ways to pull this number without all these big fancy, and they're not even fancy. That's the no. wrong way to say it. Without having books or accounting in place, you can still pull these numbers. And I think that's very important too. Like you could still pull your cost of goods if you know what your vendors are. You're going to spend a lot of time and energy that's not necessary since it's outside of a process, but you can do that. And I think I'm most passionate about that gross profit number. Like it's almost second to cash to me. Oh yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I've said it before. I don't like the top line number because it's, it doesn't really speak to me. Mm -hmm. The gross profit, especially in our profit first world um, is. Because it's real revenue. It's real revenue. It's incredibly powerful. It will help you dictate what your operating expenses are. Mm -hmm. So it will help you run a more efficient business. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason why sales, sales excite me, right? Like I'm, Mm -hmm. I oversee sales in our business and it totally excites me and it's a sign of growth in the business. Sales is not a sign of health. Mm -hmm. It's just a sign of activity. That's right. That's a good way to put it. It's not a sign of health. It's just a sign of activity. And being busy doesn't translate into being healthy. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it doesn't at all, in fact. And if you're selling something that people want and your gross profit is out of alignment and your cash is not building, then you also know you, you don't have a profitable sale yet. And fixing your profitability early is worth paying attention to. Right? Right. And you do want to pay yourself, so. <laughs> yeah. And out of $200, that, that 50% is on a profit first pendulum at 50% to you, like $100, like part of your goal is to get this business to provide for you in some way, shape, or form. So, so the fifth one, so cash, total cash available, sales collected, cost of goods invested, You know, that's more of a monthly thing, but I think you should be tracking sales collected and cash weekly, right? That's what we think. And then gross profit, which is going to end up being a monthly thing as well. Like how healthy are the sales we're creating actually doing to contribute to cash and covering things. And then the fifth thing is kind of the bottom line, (laughs) the net income number, the net (laughs) income number, right? So gross profit or real revenue is total sales minus cost of goods. And then we have that. And then the next layer is real revenue minus expenses equals net income. Very simply, there's accounting tax math in there, y'all truly, but a healthy bottom line, especially if you're a company that's having to nurse debt and do any kind of debt service, It's going to be an indicator of how much cash and in the early days, it's representative of the cash that you have available, right? Mm -hmm. So if your net income is constantly going negative, the chances of your cash at the very top of that is going down every week. Right. And so that's the next thing to watch, you know, because there is reasons. 
there's great reasons to make sure your net income is negative <laughs> in terms of tax. You know, like there could be strategies to put in place to create non-operating losses that have some tax benefit to them. Mm-hmm. But we really do care about that foundation being solid and positive in the beginning and paying attention to that early. I mean, that's right. kind of the whole point. And it also helps people stop being in, like, if you could just learn these five financial KPIs made easy and you did it from day one, this intimidation that you feel about not understanding or knowing your numbers in a very simple process, two KPIs weekly, three KPIs monthly, that intimidation will cure itself almost instantaneously. The anxiety of what those numbers are telling you might not go away, but the intimidation around numbers will actually be simplified to where you can actually figure out, well, what do I need to take care of? (laughs) Right. And I always tell people, you got to make the money. You know, there's plenty of, you know, Marilyn, we've worked with plenty of clients who've started businesses and the sales are slow to start. They'll Mm -hmm. get a good, they'll get a good win here and there, but there's no consistency in the creation of revenue. And you got to solve that problem first. That's totally right. I mean, the creation of revenue is the first thing you got to do as you're growing. You 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 got to watch the cost. I mean, that's that's the other thing we see is it's easy to invest in your company, but when you're investing, that means you're not your bottom line suffers. So it's managing that. Yeah, and so those. I mean, if if I had to just start from scratch all over again, those would be the five numbers I would personally track. And I would do the top, I would do sales and cash weekly. Mm -hmm. And I would do the sales, um, the the real revenue, the cost of goods and the net income once a month. You know, I'd want to look at those once a month and look at the other two once a week. It's simple. It's very simple. It's so simple. You might just listen to this podcast peeps and just be like, I'll get, you know, it didn't take all that to get here. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And when I got to figure that out, I will. And hey, if that's your angle, then by by all means, more power to you. But more often than not, we're struggling with cash. I think that's the big thing. And just knowing our clients and what they all deal with, especially coming out of the pandemic and wanting to be more prepared for something we're not prepared for is kind of part of that process for us and having that conversation today of like if the unfortunate thing happens again in the business which without a pandemic something unfortunate is going to happen in the business are we financially prepared for it and to what degree are we financially prepared for it and I think that's taking a look at when you decide if you're going to go further into debt it's going to make you stop and make that decision again once your weekly scorecard says I'm down to my last hundred dollars that's right or I'm down, to, you know, and if you've included a credit card as part of that available cash, because that's the amount you're willing to invest, then you'll know you're at the end of the road and you've got another decision to make that's actually a pretty sizable decision. And it's it's better to see it coming than it to slap you in the face and mm-hmm. you have no time to react. So. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing to just ask yourselves when you do these things is just, is the number going in the right direction? And Mm -hmm. and EOS simply says, is it on track or is it off track? And um, when your cash is declining, there could be a legitimate reason for that to happen. And so you could be on track with your cash declining in that season because you're making calculated risks. So in addition to defining the KPI, you have to decide what's an on track look like in this season for Mm -hmm. the next 13 weeks is there because there are could be reasons where cash needs to decline temporarily or would you have a different view of that No, i mean if you understand why it's doing that and eyes wide open going into it of course there's seasons in your business where that will happen and should happen investments investments in people and training and and that sort of thing but you know it's a temporary thing and not some uh, some systemic reason that is not going to end yeah and that's that brink in the cusp thing that I think business owners find themselves on that we have found ourselves on as well like oh it's a brink or the cusp we're gonna go down in a ball of flames or this is we're gonna fly high as the sky so 
And I think it's just the visibility, Mm -hmm. the, the visibility of knowing I'm making decisions and I've got the best information that I have available to me in these five KPIs right here. This is going to be indicative of our trends weekly and monthly, you know, from a historical perspective. And I do think just from those five numbers, you can identify a lot of issues that you need to solve depending on what they're telling you. And it it kind of like helps you focus. Because what I do know is you're never going to build cash without focus at all. Because I've been all. there, done that too. Right. You know, and I was thinking you're making decisions based on facts, not not your <laughs> your gut or your hopes. Some of that might play in, but you start with the black and white of it. And you go in with eyes wide open. And it might help you if you did some of this in the beginning. You know, Marilyn's always like, you got an idea? Give me the numbers. Mm-hmm. And I have learned, used to, I'd call Marilyn up. I'd be like, I got an idea. And we would spend hours on this idea. And it would scare the hell out of her most of the time. And like, okay, let's do this or whatever. But I don't even give her things anymore without numbers. You know, it was a really good tool to kind of put things into place. And it helped me figure out, like, is this really viable or not? Yeah. She just needed me to sit with the idea and work through the number. Absolutely. And I've seen that time and time again where it's a great idea, but we, we call it a pro forma. Okay. So That's, when you put yeah. those, those uh, numbers on paper of what your kind of uh, expectations are, sometimes you decide, nope, can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> And one of the things that have happened over time, guys, when you start putting just these very simple levers in place, it will start to add new levers like we're talking about here. Because what ended up happening for me is that because every decision is a profit decision and profit is measured in time, energy, and money, it wasn't only counting the cost of the financial thing. And I actually like the word prediction better. EOS uses that term a lot. It says you need to build the skill of prediction as a leader in your business. So it might be a better way to say, well, what's your financial prediction when we do this, you know, mm-hmm. and making yourself sit down and predict what's going to potentially happen, if you will. But as a result of every decision is a profit decision and profit is measured in time, energy, and money. And we want triple scoops, meaning we don't just want the money, but we had to sacrifice more time and energy than we needed to. You're starting to ask those, those questions. Like, do I really have the time and energy personally to pull this off? Do we as a team have the time and energy to pull this off? Is this actually going to help us get to our VTO? Because if it doesn't help us get to our VTO, it's a hell no. <laughs> you know, wait. that's what starts happening. And then yeah, you stop I've heard, just chasing a bunch of things. Yeah, I've heard I've heard more than once since since we started the US and got our VTO nailed down and and followed by all. Jessica br- brings up an idea. And it's like, nope, not right now. <laughs> you, you know, I'm bringing up. But it's not going to happen right now because it's not um, on our VTO. And it's been very freeing as a visionary to coach myself to the not right now. Right. Right. Because when they tell me we can't do this, I just, you know, the visionary in me is like, well, y'all just don't want to try that hard. (laughs) That's very like terrible to say, but this is me confessing the brain of the visionary right now, because that's not true. (laughs) This team tries very hard at every single thing we want to go after. But what this team needed more from me than anything was they needed me to have the right tools in place to make effective decisions so they didn't have to waste their time and energy on things that didn't matter right now. Mm -hmm. And it also helps me be free to challenge them and raise the bar because I'm not asking more of them then it's necessary to get to where we're going right now. I can start challenging in the right areas instead of challenging in all the areas. And our KPIs and our data have done this for us. Like the data has literally transformed our business. It really has. It really has given us focus. You know, and EOS says have no more than five to 15 numbers. And I mean, we had tons of numbers that didn't even matter. Mm -mm. 
So this is this is why we wanted to have this conversation about financial KPIs and data cadences for your online business, because getting dialed into the data that you need to focus on right now is a really relevant, timely, simple, practical, powerful exercise. It will help you reimagine what success looks like in your entrepreneurial business, hands down. It'll define what you're willing to accept and how long you're willing to accept it. And it'll help you understand what you're no longer willing to accept and put the changes in place that you need in order to create the transformation you hope. Amen. And everybody in the church said, amen. That's what Marilyn was doing. So that's it. I mean, what else could we say, Marilyn? I feel like this might be a bit heavier, overwhelming for our listeners. So maybe you could throw some more of your harmony in here because I can I can tend to be a hard tack. So no, listen, they're they're five numbers. They're 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 really not very difficult to to focus on in weekly and monthly. That's Two it. numbers once a week, three numbers once a month. And it, it can have you give you real benefit and lift in your business. So, so let's recap that. Two weekly numbers. First number is available cash. Mm-hmm. Now, in your definition, dear listener, you may decide that the credit card you're, you're willing to use to invest in your business is part of your available cash. You have to decide what's available cash. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is on Monday mornings, what was the balance as of yesterday? Mm -hmm. With all of those summed up, if you've got one credit card and 10 and five bank accounts, what's the total amount of cash available to you to use in the business? Mm -hmm. And that number hopefully will climb every week. And then eventually you'll be like, cash is no longer defined by the credit card that I have the line on my credit card. (laughs) The next number is sales collected meaning that's the sales you won and you actually took in the cash for. You Easy know, to and, get to. Not yeah, hard to get. And on Mondays, how much sales did I collect, meaning cash in the bank, as of Sunday, the last seven days, indeed Sunday, or whatever your week runs are. And then your monthly numbers are how much were my costs of goods. So you have to define your cost of goods. The easy numbers are inventory costs, refunds, and credit card processing fees. Mm -hmm. Now, yours might be different, but there's a very simple line for you. Mm -hmm. So how much was that investment that you made last month? And then it's going to be, you're going to be able to give yourself a percentage of what your cost of goods are. And then the gross profit, meaning sales collected minus cost of goods invested equals gross profit. So what was my real revenue for that month? And then what was my net income, real revenue minus all my other expenses, right? And then that's That's your net income. That's right. And you define it because there's accounting terms and there's tax terms for those things, whatever. But you define this because tax and profit and cash and accounting are all different conversations. As I say all the time, whatever you decide, just be consistent. Be consistent. This is your number. This is your tool. This isn't your income statement. This isn't your balance sheet. This isn't your statement of cash flows. These are your KPIs that help you know and understand the numbers that matter to the health of your business overall. You get to decide your KPIs. The IRS doesn't get to decide. Your accountant doesn't get to decide. Like your smart coach that you hired and paid for doesn't. You get to decide. Define all you have to do is decide it and define it and then report it and then report it when it's supposed to be reported. Just start there with those five numbers. Your confidence will be boosted. You might find some things that are very discouraging and you might be incredibly encouraged by it as well. Well, and even if they're disturbing, they have they, they have great value. So you don't have to guess, it's there. Yes, they have great value. Yeah, the, it's and don't make the nut like if we could train ourselves early to not data is not emotional. It's just no. a fact. Mm-hmm. And when it gives you something that you don't like, all you have to do is like, well, what's the root problem that I'm trying to solve for? And then solve that problem to put that thing back on track. If you turn data into an indicator of your worth, you're in trouble. Yeah, definitely. This is not an indicator of your worth. This is just an indicator of like, what are we doing? You are enough 
you are worthy. There's nothing wrong with you. There's only problems to solve. And I say there's nothing wrong with you because I don't want anything to be wrong with you. But I tell myself all the time, there's something wrong with me. And then Marilyn brings me back to the facts of like, there's growth happening here. Let's focus on what's important. Because if I could take a chance to kick myself in the can, I, I do most of the time. And I have to have these tools to keep me from being self-destructive and self-sabotaging. It's very, very important. And I know we've got some listeners out there that do that. And then we've sure. got listeners like Marilyn who are like, it's just a number. Just a number. You make Marilyn decisions. doesn't struggle with this as an indicator of value or worth. I do. So you've got both people in two different places using the same information to get to a result that we both agree on. Woo! I feel like we've been to church again. That's okay. I hope everybody takes it for what it's meant. Like, you know. Yeah, I hope help. the seeds we've sown do what they're supposed to do. That's right. Some of them are going to take root. Some of them are not. It's okay. It's we at okay. least ha had the conversation. All right. This does feel like church. I think that's why I love our podcast. It feels a little like church. <laughs> practical church. There you practical go. Practical church. Simple, practical, powerful. Okay. Well, I would say that's a wrap, right, Marilyn? That's a wrap. So, guys, thanks for listening to another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. Thanks for joining us this week. Now, before we go, it's sharing is caring time. We want you to join us each week. So if you haven't already hit subscribe for this podcast, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen, please do so now. We would also love for you to consider leaving a five-star review or share this episode with a fellow e-commerce, online, or service-based business owner that you think would benefit from gaining more pay, play, and profit in their business and life today. We hope you join us next week. And until then, be kind to yourself and to each other. Yeah, shine and be kind in 2022 with your five financial KPIs. <laughs> this is Jessica May and Marilyn signing off, y'all. Bye, guys. See you later.